look like a nuclear war scenario. So you go there, you see uh, dead trees uh, with uh, drying uh, and dying leaves uh, all over the, the landscape. Hello and welcome to another episode of Science on the Menu. My name is Ed Bray and I work in the communications team at the European Food Safety Authority, EFSA. Joining me today is Giuseppe Stancanelli. You are team leader for the team dealing with the risk assessment of plant health at EFSA. Welcome to the podcast, Giuseppe. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Today we're going to be talking about a bacteria uh, a deadly bacteria, one so deadly, in fact, that it has killed more than a third of the olive trees in the southern region of Apulia in Italy. Giuseppe, let's start with um, Zilella. Uh, that's the name of the bacteria. So Zilella fastidiosa, I understand, is the scientific name. Can you talk about how it affects plants? How does it harm them, actually? The name already indicates how this bacteria affect plants. It's called xylella because it's a bacterium that works uh, all its life in the xylem vases of the plant, which are the vases that bring the water and the nutrients from the soil to the green part of the plants. So how this bacterium affects uh, the plant is by uh, living and uh, in these vases, it obstructs, uh, closes the communication between the roots and the green part, and therefore the plant is generally uh, drying or wilting, and sometimes in some cases, like in Apulia, in the olives, uh, at the end even dying. Mm. It, it essentially, it starves mm. plants mm. of the water they need to survive. Yeah, that's exactly. What does it look like, actually? One of these olive trees that has been infected by Zalella, what does it look like? Uh, for me, uh, it was very striking. I went for the first time in Apulia in October 2013, a uh, few weeks after the, the this disease was communicated, and it looked like a nuclear war scenario. So you go there, you see uh, dead trees uh, with uh, drying uh, and dying leaves uh, uh, all over the, the landscape. So it's, uh, I think from what we discussed also with other scientists, the epidemic in Apulia is the worst epidemics ever, um, uh, ever reported for Xylella because Xylella has been reporting uh, affecting and killing in part also vineyard in California, affecting uh, um, the uh, almond in California and a part of the world, or the oranges in Brazil. But this is the first time that uh, there was uh, the, such an evident uh, um, and striking disease uh, on olive. Tell us what, what did you feel like when, when you saw that? Well, when I first went to Apulia uh, uh, and they had to think about I, my whole life, I work with plant disease. I felt really like crying for this, uh, for what I was seeing, because I never seen such a disaster. Normally, when you see a plant epidemic, you see some plants die here and there, uh, but still within the, the, the yield is normally still uh, um, a value for the farmer. But when you go to south of the Apulia, you just see the desert of dead trees. So it's, it was really a, a very striking experience. Uh, the good news is that uh, uh, within this desert of dead plants, they found some olive, some olive variety which remain green mm -hmm. and uh, can stand the, um, uh, the attack by Xylella. These are the variety, for example, Lecino or other variety uh, similar to like the Favolosa from the Frantoio or other, other one have been identified recently. And these varieties are the hope for the farmer to grow olives right. in the south of Apulia again. Mm. Right, the kind of green shoots yeah. that give hope mm. for the future. Mm. Xylella is an American uh, plant pathogen, which uh, clearly arrived in Europe uh, with the trade of plants, because mm -hmm. it, it moves uh, with the plants, doesn't move with other uh, plant product. Uh, and the strain from Apulia is completely identical to a strain from Costa Rica on olive, on, um, on coffee, sorry. They also report uh, the this strain present, for example, in uh, uh, ornamental coffee plants uh, imported into Europe uh, to be used in tropical gardens and zoo. Uh, so very likely that's the origin of this uh, of this pathogen in uh, okay. in Europe. Mm. Okay, and there's no there's no cure for uh, the disease that comes, and it arrived then in Europe. It's devastated this area of Apulia. Where else has it been found in? It in is Europe? also present in Balearic Island, in Corsica um, uh, Island, in uh, South France, 
in uh, Alicante uh, province in Spain and then also in Portugal. Mm. Okay. In the Mediterranean, uh, we also have a, a rather large outbreak uh, in Israel, in Almond. Mm. Okay. Uh, the most striking epidemics is in Apulian olives, but uh, we also have seen uh, almond, particularly almond which are grown without irrigation, uh, only with, uh, with the rainwater in summer, uh, dying in um, Balearic Island and in, uh, in Alicante. Uh, in other areas uh, like Corsica, South France, Portugal, you see more this uh, pathogen in uh, uh, natural vegetation without too much damage. So we said it's a bacteria. How does it spread from, from plant to plant? It lives inside the, uh, the xylematic vases of the plants, uh, but uh, the insect, uh, particular insects which are feeding on this uh, xylem fluid, uh, like the spittle bugs in Europe or the sharpshooter in, in America, uh, they are capable to um, suck this uh, xylematic uh, fluid and with that they also suck the bacteria which remain for all the life of the insect in their stylet, in their, uh, in their mouth. Mm. Okay. So but then by puncturing another plant, they transmit the pathogen to another plant. That's what happened in Apulia. Right. So the, there was a common insect, the spittle bug, uh, which uh, uh, so far was never reported to cause any damage to the agriculture in Europe and was very abundant in olives, and then it was able to transmit xylella, and it was, by being so abundant, transmit the disease in a in very, very high uh, proportion to the different fields. Mm. Okay, so at a certain moment, a farmer found mm. th these symptoms in the olive trees, and then, uh, then w what happened? Then researchers came in to have a look, so, give us a bit of the story. So in fact, the, uh, the first symptom were observed uh, probably two, three years before, the epidemic was, was very strange, uh, disease on olive never reported. Uh, and then finally, uh, in 2013, uh, the research from the National Research Council, University of Bari, were consulted. And uh, by looking at the symptom, uh, they uh, make the hypothesis that it could be xylella because the symptoms were very similar to what reported, not in olive, but in vineyard and uh, in uh, in citrus in, uh, um, in other uh, continents. And then they make the test and they found out that unfortunately it was really xylella. Mm. Okay, and at what point did you come in to the story, Giuseppe? And we came at the beginning, so within the first few weeks uh, from the um, announcement that it was xylella, xylella is an important uh, quarantine pathogen for Europe. We went to Apulia, we observed the situation in the field and we draw a very, very uh, fast report on what can be done to stop the spread of this uh, pathogen in Europe. And then we continue working fundamentally uh, since 2013, uh, it's more than 10 years we work on Xylella and uh, we did a risk assessment for Europe, which now are in the progress of updating with new information. Well, when we talk about the control measures that can be taken, essentially we're talking about well, drastic measure is digging up the trees, is that right? Unfortunately, there is no product at the moment which is available uh, for field application to be used to eliminate the xylella from the inside the plant. So what we need to do is to control the spread of this, uh, of this pathogen to avoid it can go to new plantation, to new areas. So uh, something you can do is you can work on the plant production. So to ensure that the plants produced in the nursery are healthy, and this you can do by testing them, by producing them on the greenhouse with nets that mm -hmm. avoid the insect, can, the spittlebug can come in and transmit the disease. But you can also treat the plants. For example, the grape, the vineyard plants, uh, during the period of dormancy when they don't have leaf, they can um, soak into hot water for a certain period. And this uh, doesn't kill the plants, if you do it uh, rightly, but kill the xylella inside. So this is a system called a thermotherapy that can be used for the woody plants. I was reading that uh, the economic damage of xylella in the Puglia region is something in the region of one and a half billion euros. Um, and I guess if Silella goes to another economic crop, let's say grapes, the wine sector, uh, the economic damage would be huge. Uh, we do not expect that the grape epidemic in Europe would cause so much damage. I think the, uh, 
the olive uh, epidemic has really been a, a, a tempest, a fantastic, let's say, uh, the perfect storm uh, because it found the very abundant vectors, very, very uh, susceptible olive variety, uh, very good climatic condition all in the same area. The this estimation of potential diamond axillella on vineyard in Europe is around 3% of the total um, uh, production, which is okay. a lot, eh? yeah. which is a lot. I think the impact of Xylella is not only the yield loss, it's also, as you said, the, um, the impact on cultural heritage, on the tradition, uh, because uh, the moment uh, um, you have uh, an attack on vineyard, you let to look for new variety, and uh, all our wine production is based on the local variety. So uh, that means the impact is not only the impact on plants, but the impact on all the all the sectors. Sure. We've talked a lot there about, you know, Xylella, the case of Xylella, its story, et cetera, and the damage that it's done. Can we draw some, you know, wider lessons about plant health from this? So the risk of trading plants is more ri- is risky. It's a very risky right. um, activity because it can bring, it's a plant is a living organism. The trade of plants is regulated. So after Xylella in particular, in Europe, we have a new plantel law uh, where a lot of effort has been put by member states, by the European Commission, by EFSA, in uh, reducing the risk for entering new plants. So now we've learned a lesson. Uh, you cannot bring the risk to zero. Uh, so to bring the risk to zero, you should stop any traveling, any, any trade, which we cannot do. Uh, we have uh, other advantages from the free trade from the free travel, uh, but we have reduced the risk. And this can be done by the effort of the member state with the European Commission by more surveillance, more strict control at the, uh, at the harbor, also by behavior of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very important to know that when you travel, you shouldn't bring plants with you, right. plant material. I think we have one case in Xylella. There was one Greenhouse in Germany, an area which is normally not very suitable for Ctilella, but as it's a brick in Saxony, because one um, one tourist brought back one plant uh, for his collection uh, from uh, from the southern area. We don't know from where, but uh, right. So this something can happen. So uh, we should do our part by not doing it. Yeah, and the, so we have a campaign, the Plant Health for Life campaign. We have a representative here who's hiding yeah, in the back, Pesky, <laughs> who is a reminder that actually if you bring plants, you risk bringing, you know, pests uh, like Pesty traveling and then maybe bringing something. Yeah. So that's something that, that can be done is communicating to people. Um, one, one final area of discussion, you, you talked at the beginning about green shoots of hope for mm-hmm. the Apulia region. Can you talk more about that? Um, what's being done in the area of research to find hope uh, in the case of Zilella that we could see olive trees again in some areas of, of uh, Apulia? We have been uh, um, fighting with research against Zilella in Europe since 2013. There have been several European projects that have been funded by the European Commission. EFS has also funded some research activity uh, to solve particular uh, issues. Uh, so now we have hope because we have uh, already identification of four varieties of olive which are resistant to olive with Silella. Uh, when we talk four, there's not many because uh, the, uh, the population of variety of olive in the Mediterranean is more than 1,000. Uh, but from the screening done so far, we already identified four and more are under study, so there is even more... Um, more hope for this. Uh, the same happened uh, for almond. Almond is a big problem, um, has a big problem caused by Xylella in Spain, but also in Israel, in the area of the Mediterranean. And already we have uh, one variety of almond identified resistant. And uh, for Vineda in California, a uh, few years ago, they registered the first two commercial wine variety resistant to Xylella, which were uh, simply uh, produced by introducing uh, with traditional uh, breeding, uh, the uh, resistant gene from the American grapes. So American grapes has been living with Xylella for thousands of years and there are resistance uh, to this pathogen. The hope is that you could then plant these resistant varieties and uh, essentially even if Xylella is present in the environment, 
the trees would live. They're, they're, they're still able to survive, if you like. Yes, the, and several hundred thousand resistant plants of olive have been planted uh, in Apulia. So the landscapes that you describe, these kind of nuclear wasteland landscapes, is going to change. Could, uh, they will change. So some of the situation in south of Apulia is better now than uh, um, in the, the last uh, 10 years. Mm. Okay, mm. thank you very much, uh, Giuseppe, for joining us and for your expertise. And to all our listeners, thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast, uh, like it, share it, rate it. Uh, if you give us a rating, we can reach more listeners um, and we can get our message out. Uh, please check us out on our social media channels uh, and see other content related to our podcast. Uh, you can check out the old epi episodes as well. Uh, but for now, that's all from us. So thank you very much from me. It's also thank you from Giuseppe. Thank you. And see you again soon on the next episode of Science on the Menu. Goodbye. Goodbye.